Welcome to EFT MBA Mastering Business Acumen with the help of EFT business experts. Learn the marketing, mindset, and skill set you need to create the EFT coaching practice of your dreams. Visit www.eftmba.com for more information. And now, here's the EFT training team that embodies the art and science of EFT, Alina Frank and Dr. Craig Weiner. Well, hello, hello, everybody, and welcome back. Uh, today's show is a little bit different, and I'm excited. I love working with Lee in every show, but she's unable to be here, so I get to ride solo today. Now, you're probably listening to the show because somewhere you've seen the topic and you've seen the 22 seconds um, headlines about an EFT elevator speech. Some people are wondering why 22 seconds, maybe what exactly is an elevator speech. So what I will do is I'm going to tell you. We've got a lot to cover today, and I just want to thank you for joining MBA for EFT Coaches, the art and science of making money and changing the world. And in every show, what we try to do is to bring to you information and ideas that will help EFT practitioners and coaches to build a thriving practice. You know, we are out there across the country teaching uh, practitioners how to learn the art and science of EFT and found that a lot of them just are not thriving in practice. And so we dedicated this radio show and we dedicated a program, a six-month program that you can find at EFTMBA.com to be able to find out more, and this is one of the aspects. So we are going to talk about elevator speeches. Now, elevators have gotten faster, haven't they? (laughs) They go a lot faster. We used to have what was said 60 seconds to be able to tell somebody when they asked us, what do you do for a living? What is it that you do? And we'd have the length of a long elevator ride down to tell them, hence the origins of the name. But given the Internet, given attention spans, some reports that really attention spans are down to eight seconds, um, we don't have as much time. And somehow in a short period of time, when somebody, we meet somebody at a party or a friend uh, introduces us, somehow in a short period of time we have to capture their in- attention and intrigue them to what we do. So in 22 seconds, what we want to accomplish is not closing, so to speak. We don't want to tell them what we do and have them schedule an appointment and all of that. That's ridiculous, isn't it? So somehow within 8 to 10 seconds, we want to have an open dialogue not a monologue, one where we can open the conversation and then continue it. And we've intrigued them enough and we've created enough trust and enough rapport that they think and feel our interest in their intrigue about what we do. And it begins a conversation and we want to accelerate their ability to find out what we do. And we want them to ask us even more, what is it about that tapping? How does it help? What does it do? So in that short period of time, we have to be able to answer the question of WIIFM for them. What's in it for me? People want to know how you can be of assistance to them. We're selfish in a good way. We want to be able to help ourselves, and we need to be able to do that. Otherwise, they're going to tune us out pretty quick. So the biggest tip that you're going to get today that we get a lot from um, practitioners is what happens if they ask about how much we cost? So we tell them a little bit about EFT in whatever way we do, and they start asking about money, et cetera, and we are going to make this very strong recommendation that nine out of ten times that they are just fishing and getting information, they're going to walk away, they're not going to commit. So if you start to talk about prices ahead of time before they have trust, before they have a sense of really what is possible to do with you, It's not going to be very useful. So our strong recommendation is to set it up so that their intention is to be able to get interested in setting up a consult where you can establish further rapport, further connection, and be able to have that conversation about money. Do not do it when you first meet them. We don't recommend that. Now, what I want to offer you is, does this sound anything like you? Hi, my name is Lisa. I'm a certified EFT coach. Well, it's sort of an energy healing modality. It uses the meridian system in Chinese medicine. It's like emotional acupuncture without needles. And I took my training with Chris Rockstar. I, I, you know, I've got a 90% success rate with, with phobias and weight loss, and I work with anxiety and depression and infertility. 
um, childhood abuse, addiction, smoking, cessation, PMS, back pain, and even male pattern baldness I, I do really well with. And I guarantee my work with a money-back guarantee. Hello? Uh, come back. No, I'm not done yet. You know, a little bit of an exaggeration, but very often at that moment we don't know what we're going to say in advance. We're not planned. We're trying to basically vomit out enough information that's going to that's going to convince them that what we do has meaning and purpose and value, and it just comes off horrific. It's terrible. It's embarrassing. We've all walked away from those conversations, both online and in person, right? So there are at least eight things wrong with that elevator speech that I just gave you. So I'm going to put this challenge out to you. Go ahead to our website. That's the uh, EFTTappingTraining.com where we talk about the art and science of EFT. And we post all the radio programs that we do on the site there. And tell us what you think some of the problems were with that. And next month, what we're going to do is we're going to give the person with the most answers as far as what was wrong with that elevator speech our free ebook on using EFT for abundance. Okay? Now, we're also going to give a beautiful elevator speech, but we want you to work on what we just talked about first. Now, what we're going to do next is for those people that don't feel 100% calm and relaxed and confident about telling people, about what you do, and talking to them about your prices at the appropriate time, not during your elevator speech, then this is going to translate into a lack of clients or clients that are not willing to pay you handsomely for your services because you're lacking that confidence, that ability, that that sense of that I am worth what I'm asking for for my time. So what we're going to do today is a little different. Um, we've had Alina pre-record a session um, of EFT to help coach a woman named Sue to help illustrate this common block. And I'm going to go ahead and hit play so that you can listen to that, and then I'm going to come back and join you right after that. So on your mark, get set, here we go. Hi, Sue. Hi. So I sent out a little questionnaire ahead of time, um, just kind of gathering information, and one of the things that showed up for you was this idea of, you're selfish. Yeah. So, so if, if, when this shows up as a, as a challenge in your business, I mean, it can really just do all kinds of harm if you're feeling that you know you're too selfish to get what you know a, a top dollar top dollar for your services, or I'm too selfish to even be doing this work with me when I sent it out there that I would be. I would be helping people. You, what came up for you was, you know, somebody else might need it. Yeah. Um, something that could really help you um, move forward in your business. So when you were filling this out, you, you kind of mentioned that a memory came up. You know, even out of doing kind things for people, you know, there would be someone on the sideline saying, oh, you know, what's in it for you? And that's a that's very big when I'm in my business. I know that it's in the shadows, right? Sure. So so if you were if you how how do you do with like free consults and getting to the part where you share your prices and your packages and all that? Do you feel like they're they're they've got that question in the back of their mind? You know, uh, yeah, I do, and I've and I've really been like committed to the value of the work. Mm -hmm. And my own experience and working with leaders, you know, and experienced practitioners in the industry, knowing the value of the work, knowing that there, the, the value has to be there for the client. Mm -hmm. but, the, but the value for me is where it is, right? The value for your services. Yes. Okay, wait, so, so let me just have you close your eyes and run through that scenario of you're going to give somebody, you're going to you have a consult with a, with a potential client, and they're all excited. They're talking to you. You're you're engaging. Things are going fine. It's flowing. There's a there's a connection. It feels like a good fit. And then you come to the part where you're expressing your top package, your most expensive offering that you have. And let me hear how you're feeling about that. Okay. So right now, just heading towards it, I feel a lot of. Anxiety. I feel a lot of um, fast heart rate, a lot mm -hmm. of physical symptoms. Right. 
and I just feel that you know just that shadow thought of you know it's just it's just not worth it. But it's not like a conscious oh they're going to think it's not worth it. It's a feeling mm-hmm. of not really worth it. Okay. All right. Are you fam- you familiar with matrix ray imprinting? No, no, I am not. Okay, so I'm going to run through this with you pretty quickly. Okay. I want you, I want you to tap on your finger point, and then your karate okay. chop point. Okay. Your finger point and your karate chop point, and you're going to keep doing that continuously. Okay. And if you feel comfortable closing your eyes, you can close your eyes and continue okay. to tap. Okay. And I want you to really tune into that feeling of. I'm less entitled. I'm just not worth. It's not worth it. The the anxiety that you're feeling, just thinking of that scenario with a potential client, and tell me where that shows up in your body while you continue to tap. Okay. Uh, it's it's in my chest and my stomach. It's a flutter in my chest in my heart. Mm-hmm. And there's a like a like a trembling almost in my body. Okay, so I want you to focus on that feeling it throughout your body, and let's ask your body. Your body has a lot of wisdom and knowledge. We're just going to ask your body to send us back to an event connected with you feeling the same way, even if you can't see the connection, even if you don't know what it's about. It's just going to easily guide you to a memory we need to work on. And okay. tell me, tell me when you get there. Okay. Okay, so what's showing up was when I was really little. I was actually in a high chair, and uh, but there was no back on it, and I and I I went back in the chair. Okay, so I want you to see that little Sue sitting in the high yeah. chair, who's separate from who you are today with me on this call. Okay. Okay, do you see her there? I do. And it, has she already fallen, or is she about to fall? No, she's falling back, and she's. I'm falling back. Okay, so she's falling back. Yeah. And did she hit the ground? No, the dog walked behind me. Okay. And the screaming was at the dog to stop so that I didn't hit the ground. Okay, okay. Oh. So, so... um. I want so so you the little Sue seeing her now she is screaming at the at the dog and the dog stops the adults were screaming at the dog at the dog to stop where he was in his place to stop me from hitting the floor okay and did that happen I don't see it okay all right so I want you to I want you to freeze all of the people in that scene is it a kitchen or a dining room yeah it's a kitchen Okay, so I want you to freeze all the adults. I want you to freeze the dog, and I just want you to connect with little Sue. Okay. All right? I want you to explain who you are, that you've come from the future, that you're here to help her out, and okay. keep keep tapping on your finger points and your karate chop points. Okay. Does she acknowledge you? She is, and she was frightened by the yelling of yeah. the people, not the fall. Yeah. Wow. Okay. So um, so where does she feel that fear in her little body? Have her show you or tell you? In her shoulders, in her chest. Okay. Yeah. All right. And is there a color with that? Uh, gray. All right. I want you to take her little hand and tap on the side of it. And you're going to explain that this is something that you learned in the future that's really going to help her out. And then start tapping on her karate chop point. And you're, we're going to say aloud on her behalf, and you're just going to repeat me. Even though you feel all of this fear. Even though you feel all this fear. In your shoulders and chest. In your shoulders and chest. I'm here to help you. I'm here to help you. You're going to be okay. You're going to be okay. Even though you feel all this fear. Even though you feel all this fear. In your shoulders and chest. In your shoulders and chest. I'm right here with you. I'm right here with you. You're going to be okay. You're going to be okay. Even though you feel all this fear. Even though you feel all this fear. In your shoulders and chest. In your shoulders and chest. I'm right here beside you. I'm right here beside you. I'm here to help you through this. 
I'm here to help you through this. And you're going to be okay. And you're going to be okay. So go ahead and tap on all of her points, all of this fear. All of this fear. All this fear. All this fear. This fear in your shoulders and chest. This fear in your shoulders and chest. This grave 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 fear in your shoulders and chest. Good. Go back to just tapping on your own finger points and karate chop point and check with little Sue and see how she's doing. Check out that gray energy. Is it dissipating? Yeah. It's dissipating and the trembling has stopped. Okay, good, good. Um, let's let's get some more information a, a, about this. What what was going on here? From get the, get it get the information from her. What what was happening here that she started to fall back? That the adults were yelling. Any other information she wants to share with us? Um, no, I she, she's. She just forgot there was no back on the stool she was in. She was used to being in a chair or a high chair with a back on it. Mm -hmm. She was in the stool. Mm -hmm. And she just sat back. She doesn't get the yelling. I think the yelling was the adults fearing of her falling. Right. But that's not what she learned from that. So let's ask her, because she sat there and she started to fall back, she forgot the adults were yelling. Let's let's hear what the beliefs were about herself or about life that came as a result of this event. And she'll know. She'll tell you. Okay. Um, um, I think that she learned confusion. She she she's, looks very confused. So let's let's hear if there are any more beliefs about how the world works, how people work, out of that confusion and that yelling? Um, no. No, but it's really funny. She's. I feel like she's kind of walking away, and there's another incident that's showing up. I have no idea yeah. if they're related. Yeah, 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 yeah. That happens. And they, yeah. <laughs> so, so let's, let's Let's ask her if anything else needs to happen in this one little scene with the ch with the high chair before we go on to the next one. Does anything need to happen here? She just needs to get down from the table. Okay. So so have her get down. Yeah. yeah. And then again, thank her for for what how she's helping us out here. She's being a very good little girl. Yeah. Have her show us where where she wants to take us next. There's something else that's coming forward that needs. Yeah, another two. Yeah, this is the one. This is one that was. Um, she was playing. So she was playing with her friend next door, and his name was Michael. And we were little, and we were playing about on a snowman. And we were wrestling. We were kids wrestling, and you know, in the snow, and mm -hmm. just you know, rolling around and being a abominable snowman, mm -hmm. and. I pinned him down, <laughs> which is really interesting. And his mother came out and started screaming, Get off the head! What are you doing? I'm going to tell your mother. Okay. What are you doing? And we were just like, okay, playing, rustling. And then we got the, you know, her rage and her upset. Okay. Hold, hold on a second. Tell, mm -hmm. I want you to I want you to freeze Michael and freeze his mom. Yeah. And I want you to connect with that Sue. Approximately how old is that Sue? I'm thinking she was like around nine or ten or eleven. Okay. All right. Yeah. And I want you to just connect with her a moment. Explain who you are, that you're here to help her out. Okay. That you've brought a tool back from the future that's going to help her feel better. Okay. She's really upset. Okay. Take her hand and start tapping. Yep. Even okay. though you're Even though you're feeling really upset. Even though you're feeling really upset. I'm here to help you through this. I'm here to help you through this. Even though you're really upset. Even though you're really upset. I'm here to help you. I'm here to help you. You're going to be okay. You're going to be okay. Even though you're feeling really upset. Even though you're feeling really upset. 
You're still a really good girl. You're still a really good girl. And I'm going to help you through this. And I'm going to help you through this. Good. I want you to tap on her points, feeling upset, 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 feeling upset. That. All right, go back to just tapping on your finger points and your karate chop point. Okay. And check with with nine or ten year old see Sue. She see how she's doing. She's she's calm. calm. She's calm. Okay. All right. Because this happened with her friend, and she was just playing, and she was on top of him. Mother came. Her his mother came out and screamed at them in this way. Again, let's hear what beliefs about herself or the world were created. So, the mother made it dirty. Ooh, okay. Yeah, and that was the upset for her. She made it, I mean, you know, I didn't know the word sexual at that age. She yeah. Didn't know that word, but she made it that. And she made it that to my, my mom and dad, and it wasn't. And that's where the upset was. So that's what I... It was like the truth. Like, so there's my intention, right? She was playing. Mm -hmm. She was playing. They were playing. And um, so, you know, that's one belief is, I don't know, you know, I, I, they didn't believe me. I couldn't, I told the truth and they don't believe me. Okay, so she, so after this, this happened outside, then comes the part where she's face her parent. She tells the neighbor, the neighbor tells her parents, and her, she tells her parents, and the parents don't believe her. Right, my mom, my parents believed me. Okay, but, but the neighbor didn't believe you. The neighbor didn't. Okay, so I want so does that interaction happen outside, or does it happen later on, where she tells the neighbor, Michael's mother, what's going on? That it from her side, it's she speaks the truth, and Michael's mother doesn't believe her. Does that happen outside? It happens outside. Yeah. Okay. All right. So I want you to to have that happen. Yeah. Okay. And then that did. So she didn't. She wasn't believed. Right. Okay. Um. What do you want to tell Sue that she that from your higher self? about all of this that that I believe her and that I know that it was her truth and that she was on it and that it's that it's okay to be your authentic self to be true and honest when you're true and honest good yeah so yeah and to and and to acknowledge her for telling the truth and just because someone doesn't believe you doesn't make it a lie great wow and there's nothing to be ashamed of good yeah. all right is she listening to you she is good okay yeah, she's listening like she already got that you know like, <laughs> okay. all right so what would be the best possible thing for her to experience in this moment here with Michael's mother. What would she like to experience here with Michael's mother? Or is this knowing enough? Is the knowing that it doesn't matter if she believes me or not, it's okay. What, what would she like to experience? I think she would like to experience like a conversation with her. Like, why don't you believe me? Like, she couldn't even say anything. Okay. Like, to just have her hear her. Great. But she wouldn't. She just kept screaming and screaming. Gavin, and you know, she just was like so confused by adults when she was little. Like they were so irrational, but she didn't know irrational. She just knew crazy. Right. Yeah. Okay. So, so does she need to have Michael's mother listen to her, and she okay. needs to speak the truth? I think so. Well, let's yeah. ask her. Let's ask yeah, her if that's what she wants. She does. She okay. does want that. Yeah. Okay. Good. So I want you to watch that happen. Okay. Okay. 
Okay. She's she's good. Good. And Michael's when she said, "What are you doing?" She she said, "We're playing about abdominal the abdominal snowman. We're having fun." And her mother said, "Okay, have fun." Okay. And she walked away. So that's good. Great. Does she want to just go back to playing with Michael? Yeah. Okay. Excellent. Yeah. I want you to put your hand to your heart center and tap at the back of the hand. Okay. And I want you to bring in that positive feeling of speaking your truth authentically, telling someone the truth, really feeling good about speaking your truth. And that happy image of that 9 or 10-year-old Sue playing with Michael, carefree, having fun outside in the snow. Bring all that sensory information, the sight, sound, smell, taste, colors. Come all in through the top of your head, rewiring all the neural pathways with the knowledge that things have changed. And send that information down to all the cells of your body from the top of your head down to your toes. Bring those positive images and feelings into your heart center and then grow, expand, and intensify. And then exhale all of that information out through your heart, sending it 360 degrees out in every direction with an exhale through your heart. And you can open your eyes when you're done. Okay. All right, how are you feeling? I feel good. I feel clear. Good. I want you to close your eyes and check on 9 or 10-year-old Sue with Michael. How does she seem right now? Playful. She's, she's, winning, the, she's winning the match. <laughs> okay. <laughs> good. And I also want you to see little Sue... In the in the kitchen, how is she doing? She's doing good. She's just playing around, you know, hanging out. Good. Yeah. And now I want you to keep your eyes closed, and I want you to think about, again, a consult with a prospective client, and it gets to the part where you've got to talk about your packages, your what you what you expect to be paid, and you're saying all of this. Are you feeling nervous or anxious at all? Not at all. Not Yay! At all. I feel empowered. <laughs> Super. Awesome. Awesome. Thank you. All right. Thank you so much, Sue. Okay. So what have we discovered? In case you don't know, that was an EFT matrix re-imprinting session, um, which is something that we do a lot of work with and training with. And you know, in the EFT MBA program, what we find is everybody wants to focus on right away the marketing, the the what do you do externally, and so much of the results that happens comes from our self-esteem, how we're feeling about our fees, how we're feeling about putting ourselves out there, so much of the internal work. So the balance between both of those is so important, the personal work combined with developing the skills for how do you do the marketing, the SEO, the elevator speeches, all of those things. So we have to keep in mind that we have to keep that balance. Now I'm going to remind you um, regarding that um, elevator speech that may not have been the best one that I went over earlier. Uh, you're more than likely watching and listening right now to the EFT Tapping Training audio, and right underneath there, there's a place where you can post comments. So, again, the person that finds the most things wrong with that recorded elevator speech will win the free ebook on abundance. I just want to make a few announcements that we are now accepting new applications for the April onset of the EFTA MBA uh, six month program, and that's at EFT MBA. Dot com mastering business acumen um, and uh, if you'd like to join us and see upcoming events and everything that's happening you can, and you're on Facebook we have an EFT tapping training and workshop page and if you're interested in doing some face to face training in January in the Northwest we're doing our once a year manifestation wheel training for working with creating your new year of 2014 in January we'll be teaching level one and two EFT in Matrix in Florida. 
In February, we'll be back teaching in the Northwest, and we'll also in February be in Santa Fe and Phoenix teaching EFT 1 and 2 and Matrix. So lots of ways to find out more. You can uh, go to our website and post any questions you have. Thank you so much to the thousands of listeners that are listening in and sending in wonderful comments. We really appreciate you, and we will continue to give what you ask for with regarding to helping you have a thriving EFT practice. Thank you so much. It's always a privilege and honor to be with you. Have a great day.